you're going on 13 years as a pro. How can you resume everything that you've done in your career? All the goods, all the ups, all the downs. The truth, I'm very happy with my career. With these almost 13 years as a pro. I think that I'm making history and I'm very satisfied. And basically I'm satisfied. Saul, you have one defeat on your record. And we remember it really good. Do you got any reflections about what happened that night when you lost? Would you like a rematch with Floyd? The truth? The truth I, I, I lost because of lack of experience. Nothing to explain, basically. He beat me because he had way more experience than me. But I learned so much from that fight. And it's hard to uh, have a defeat, but... But it's given me more motivation. And it helps me do what I do today. And... And sure, yes, I've I've wanted a rematch. I wish I could have it, but now that we see you fight, we see that you fight a little bit like Floyd, like the shoulder roll. Uh, no, I've always known about defense and all that, and there's there's. There's opponents that you can use that defense with, but there's other ones that you don't need to. But ever since I was a kid, Chepo and Eddie, they showed me about defense. And if you see, and if you watch fights when I was really young, you can see that I've always used defense. But like I said, there's rivals you use it for. What were the most bitter moments in the ring? Basically, losing against Floyd was really bitter. And the uh, decision I got with Golovkin was pretty bitter. And it was bitter because this, that's not the decision I wanted. But happy because I gave the public a very good fight. And in the end, it's, it's actually good because I made the public happy. Let me stop it a little bit. So uh, this guy, I think his name's Jorge Antonio or something like that. He's he's saying, um, he's, uh, uh, he's asking Canelo about his fight against Golovkin. Now he, uh, he's asking him, about the rounds, he said, because you started off really good, your first three rounds were good, and, and your last three rounds were really good. So he's asking him what happened in the mid-rounds between four and six. Look, there's things that happened during those rounds. From the fourth to the sixth, there's things that happened to me, but I'm not going to disclose that information and during the fight I couldn't I couldn't allow nobody to know so I didn't tell my corner anything because you definitely don't want your opponent to know that something's wrong so yes from the fourth to the sixth round something happened something happened to me and I went to my corner, and I didn't tell them nothing. But they knew. They they told each other. He's kind of tired. There's something wrong with him. He's got something. He's got something. So later on, when I get a chance, you know, you guys are going to hear what happened. But right now, I can't say nothing about it.
so so later on as i i try to get a little more warmer um i just try to do my fight but be but that that whatever happened to me i had it you know i had it for the whole fight that's why you got an operation and he says yes so basically i guess it was his knee you know that he was that he's not really trying to come out and say but uh but he's talking about his knee So a year later, you're facing Golovkin. What do you have to do different this time to be competitive? And to aspire to win. Um, no, I believe that I did an excellent job. Uh, and I don't have to change my style. What I got to do is add to it. I got to throw more, more, I got to throw more punches. But I was very effective in the first fight. More than anything, it's a physical condition that I have to, that I have to, um, that I have to work on and throw, throw a, a bit more punches. What's the more, most dangerous thing about Triple G? His punches are, are, are the most dangerous things. And his jab is okay. But it's not a strong jab. So, so he, his, uh, his jab is good, but you you have to remember that his jab is only a tool to set up his right hand. So, going back, the jab is a tool to set up the right hand, but he's also a boxer that you know you can. He heavily telegraphs his punches, and any time he's going to throw a heavy punch, you can see it coming from a mile away. So anything he's gonna throw, you can see it coming. Uh, uh, jab, uh, uh, jab, uh, overhand right, overhand left, uh, a hook, a body shot. You can see them all coming. Because he always uses the jab to set it up. So it. So I, I can see that after, you know, all that preparation that you did, you were able to see a bunch of holes in Golovkin's game, basically a bunch of defects that he has. And you were able to hit him with some beautiful uppercuts and punches. Do you think, uh, do you think the next fight will be the same? Will, will, will you be able to connect the same beautiful punches on, on Golovkin? Uh, yes, I think so because uh, he has a uh, Golovkin has a style that he can't change. He's a one-dimensional. He can't change his style. And I'm I'll I'll be able to do a lot of things in the ring with him because he's the type of pot fighter. He's the type of boxer that. When you hit him, he's not going to counter punch you. And we're going to work in all this. Obviously, we're going to have a good strategy. And you know, when you have the experience, you know that, you know, we're going to have a good strategy going in, but you can't always, you, you, you can't always fulfill that strategy. You may, you can't always, it doesn't always come out perfect.
So basically, we, we're going to have a strategy. But like I said, uh, uh, you can't always pull it out perfectly. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to uh, go 100 percent prepared and we're going to improvise as we go along, make adjustments. How was your recovery from the from the surgery? It was very good. It wasn't complicated. I, they just took a cyst out of my knee. And I'm very happy with the doctors. They did a good job. And, and uh, I'm still running on the treadmill right now. I'm not really running on hard surfaces because we don't want to mess up, you know, mess up the knee. Yeah, we're trying to, we're not trying to give it any kind of hard, hard work on that knee. But everything's good. Thanks to God. Was it was the negotiation tough? Because we know Eric Gomez was saying one thing and then you were saying another thing. So it seemed like it was a bit tough negotiations. How was that whole thing with the negotiations? It was very hard. It was very hard because I was dragging a lot of things into this negotiation. Because basically, you know, the the media has always been sabotaging me somehow. You know, you guys make things, you guys take things way out of out of the way they are. And it's hard. But I've always had a strong mentality. And I know how to control myself. And basically the communication was 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 what messed everything up. So is there a problem between you and uh and uh I mean it's obvious that there's a that they have a problem with you guys, but is is it reciprocated? Do you guys have a problem with them? Is it mutual? Yes. Well, basically there's no cordiality left. We're just we're no longer cordial and we don't I don't have respect for him no more. Because of so many things. I don't like to talk a lot. But in this case in this this case this is where my character comes out and yes, I do get mad and you know it pissed me off a little bit. But but I know how to control myself always. And that part is over. And you know, to be honest, I don't know why they're mad at me. I've I've given them the the biggest payday by far, so they should not even be mad at me. And they 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 say that it's not about the money, but when you look at it, it's all about the money for them. You know, that's the only thing they care about. The money, the the purse, that's all they care about. And there, it's a big hypocrisy to say that it's not about the money. And then that's that's the only reason why they didn't want to sign the contract. And it's all hypocrisy. Yes, Saul, why, why is it that you guys aren't going to do no press conferences or anything like that? Well, we did a a, a whole pe press conference already for the last fight, and and you know we had already done all the this uh, all these you know press tour and all that. 
So there's no need for it, really. And, uh, you know, everything, all the drama and everything that's been going on, we just thought it was convenient not to... We thought it was inconvenient to do anything more. So the fight is on and that's what's important. So we just felt the need, no need to promote the fight anymore, you know, because everybody knows that it's going on and everything. So we, we'll probably just do a, 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 when we're in training camp, we'll do a couple little things here and there, and uh, we'll promote it that way a little bit. Um, oh, so we're planning on doing a a, a satellite type of, uh, of uh, presentation, you know, separate, me, me and my gym and then him at his gym. Because basically, we promoted the fight enough. All right. No palcaseamos. I'm going to try to upload this. This is already 16 minutes. So uh, look forward to the second part. All right.